Hello lovely people, welcome to another book chat, the regular roundup of stuff I've read at some point in my past. I've got four books to talk about, I'm going to crack on with it, I'm going to start with a reread. I reread Legendborn by Tracy Dion. This was one of my favourite books of 2020, I absolutely adored it. I did a reread because um, I've mentioned it before, me and my lovely friend Mark have a podcast together, it's always linked to the description down below. Um, we've done a podcast episode on Legendborn, I will link that down below because then you can listen to like our full thoughts. Um, I'll do this in a spoiler free manner here, but I'm pre-warning you that the podcast is chock full of spoilers, so please only listen if you have already read this or you don't mind spoilers. Um, I was really interested to see how I would feel rereading this because um, at the time of recording I have a massive backlog of book chats, so you're getting them a couple of months after they have been recorded, but at the time of recording it's only been a few months since I read this for the first time, so I wasn't sure if it was going to be too soon to have reread it. I had a wonderful time, I loved it, I did that thing that you do where you're like, I know what's going to happen but maybe this time it won't happen, it always happens. I definitely noticed extra things doing this a uh, second time round that I hadn't noticed the first time round, especially to do with some of the like reveals at the end. I'm realising I've not given you a plot summary of this. This follows Brie. <laughs> She goes to this uh, university on sort of this like uh, scholarship kind of plan because she's 16. While she's there there's like a demon attack on campus and she sees like a bunch of students dealing with it and she discovers that she has magical powers and she finds this like secret society called the Order of the Round Table and there's a lot of shenanigans going on. One thing I really like about this is because you're following Brie you're kind of like really thrown in and a lot of the time she doesn't really understand what's happening so you don't really understand what's happening so you're having to like pick up all these pieces of like lore as you go on and piece together what is going on. Whereas on the reread, I didn't have that aspect because I already know what's happening. So that gave me time to sort of like appreciate aspects that I hadn't really fully noticed the first time around. For example, I love Alice so much. Alice is Bree's best friend. And the first time around, I think I got quite swept up in Bree's narrative. And I was like affronted that Alice was like, I don't know, letting Bree's dad know that she was maybe doing some irresponsible things. And I was like, how could you, Alice? I'm an adult. I know that that's responsible. <laughs> This time around I really appreciated like Alice being like so astute and on it. I was like that is a good friend to have. Another thing that really hit me really hard on this reread was a lot of the stuff to do with Brie and her mum and that's not to say that it didn't hit me on the first time around because it did. I think it was just rereading it at the time that I did and sort of like all of this focus on Brie and her grief and how like visceral it is and that kind of thing that just really got me. I love the magic in this. I'm so interested to see where it's going to go next. I'm so interested to see how all of these different players, the places that they are on the board at the end of this book, how is this going to get picked up? Where are we going to go? I will draw this to a close because I have a whole podcast episode talking about it and my original review of it, but I just think that this is such a good book. It does things with such nuance and I just love it. After that is a non-fiction. This is The Celts by John Davies. This is based on a uh, S4C series which I have not watched because I think it was first aired like 20 years ago. Essentially this is a non-fiction book that is all about the Celts. I found it really interesting. John Davies is the author of uh, The History of Wales that I read during Dewey-thon. It was an incredibly information-packed book. It was nice to read a smaller book of his because I really enjoyed A History of Wales but it was a lot to take in. Whereas because this was a little bit smaller I think I got to like really immerse myself in it like in like a brief sort of intensity rather than sort of that book which I read for quite a while. By this point in my reading I have read a lot of books that are about the history of Wales so a lot of the stuff in this that is focusing on sort of like Welsh history I kind of knew. Similarly, whilst I don't know them to the same extent, like the Irish and Scottish strands, again, what I found really interesting about this was some of the uh, Breton history that I learnt, because I don't really know a lot of Breton history, and I didn't really have much understanding of how it became sort of absorbed into French as a whole. So that was really intriguing to me. There's all of these sort of like similarities going on in regards to sort of like assimilation of language and how do you make sure that language perseveres because whilst these are all distinct cultures because they are all like Celtic language based they have this kind of thing that ties them together so it was really interesting to sort of see like what are shared experiences that these cultures all have what are sort of experiences that are individual to different cultures 
um, that was just super interesting. There's a lot of stuff early on about like archaeological finds and our understanding of what exactly a Celt would be and how that changed over time and where do Celts come from and all these sort of concepts. So this is one of those where I kind of went in feeling like I had a vague idea of what would be covered and actually like coming out of it I can definitely say that there are like things that I have learned that I have really enjoyed learning. Um, I think John Davis is great, I think he is very thorough but also like every now and then you get a little twinkle of dry humour which I really appreciate. <laughs> so yeah this was really great and it was a really fun non-fiction. Um, I'm going to end on talking about two books by the same author. These are The Silver Chair and The Horse and His Boy by C.S. Lewis. As you will know if you have watched previous book chats, I have been working my way through the Chronicles of Narnia on a reread. Um, it's not been going as well as I had hoped it would. I just think that these are books that are not necessarily for me as an adult reader. In many ways The Silver Chair is back to a more like sort of traditional plot structure of like an adventure story. I think I said in my review of um, Voyage of the Dawn Treader that um, it was like tiny little episodes but not a lot. It wasn't, there wasn't really like a driving force I felt like to me. Whereas with the, silver, with the Silver Chair there is this driving narrative so I did appreciate that. I do also really like a lot of the ideas that C.S. Lewis has. Like a lot of the imagery in this. Jill and Eustace have returned to Narnia and essentially they're trying to find this lost prince who has been taken by this enchantress who disguised herself as like this silver serpent kind of thing. Um, and so there are lots of these visuals that I think are really cool, like in this they encounter like giants, they encounter these underground people who like live deep underground in the dark amongst like lava and stuff, they encounter this enchantress, I think there are some really fabulous concepts. I think what it is that I struggle with is I don't love the way that C.S. Lewis enacts them. An aspect of this one partly is just like reading this as an adult reader I got a bit impatient sometimes with like um, things that felt very obvious to me and I try and remind myself that that's because I'm an adult and also I have read this book before like obviously X being Y secretly makes sense to me because I have read it. <laughs> So I try not to like mark it down because of that. Things that actually bother me in this is again some of these attitudes that C.S. Lewis has that I feel really like permeate the text. I felt like um, a lot of the characterization of the Enchantress is based on like really sexist ideas. Later when they meet this guy and they're like god he does everything she says what a wet blanket and it's like the worst part of this arrangement is that he is beholden to a woman and does what a woman says without questioning it rather than like I don't know she's evil <laughs> so like in many ways I enjoyed this one more because I really liked a lot of these concepts and I thought they were really fantastic it's just I also feel really sad and disappointed because I didn't love how they were executed The Horse and His Boy is interesting insofar as it doesn't involve people from our world going into Narnia it is just telling a story of Calamon which is a land within Narnia I follow Shasta um, who essentially runs away with this talking horse, he meets this girl and another talking horse and they're trying to get to Narnia, they uncover sort of like a plot that is going on. I think I have a lot less to say on this one, I definitely liked this one less than this one. The portrayal of like the Calamon people and stuff is highly questionable, the attitudes towards slavery is kind of a bit weird, um, the story did not hook me as much, there was because there's there's less of these like really cool ideas and it's more just sort of like a journey. Um, again, these like return to like the Christian allegory that is continually present. It doesn't always work for me, it's just like a plot thing that is happening. Like I can only see it through sort of like the allegory that it is trying to tell rather than just like I don't enjoy it as like an actual story of what is happening. Um, yeah, I don't. I really don't really have a lot to say on this one, which is why I thought I would just talk about them together because I didn't have enough to talk about this one on its own. I'm just not really enjoying it, <laughs> which is a bit sad. Um, the Magician's Nephew, which is the next one because I'm reading them in chronological publishing order, um, was always my favourite as a kid, so I'm hoping that one might be a bit better. But on the whole, I just feel a bit disillusioned with Narnia. I think when I remembered it fondly, the things I'm remembering a lot are like the visual images that it evokes in me. Um, and doing a reread is just sort of kind of reminding me of all the bits that I'd forgotten that I didn't really like so much. But anyway, I'm, loads of people love this, you know, <laughs> it's fine. Um, but yeah, that's everything I want to talk about this week. I would love to hear your thoughts on these. Please do leave a comment down below. But otherwise, I hope you're having a lovely day. I will see you next time for something different.